from shards to wholeness. And it's a goal, screams the commentator as Zack scored his final winning goal. What a match it was. 6-2, out of which Zack made three goals. It's one of his best performances ever. As much as I love football, I never really had the talent to play. But that never stopped me from seeing every match out of my favorite team, Hale United's. And that's how I found my favorite player, Zack Mackey. And before I realized, he grew from an idol to my crush in a few years. I started observing over him, to the level where I started drawing and painting him more and more instead of painting to make a living out of it. Painting is my passion. Ever since my childhood, I've always played with colors, brushes, sketchbooks, and whatnot. My mother used to tell me that I am a born painter because I never took any special lessons, yet I drew well, even as a child. I walked back to my room to finish another painting of Zack that I started painting a week before. Painting him keeps me calm and focused for some reason. After my mother passed, I started having panic attacks and painting usually helped me in that, but I would still be anxious to some extent. All of it disappeared one day as I randomly painted Zack after seeing a few matches and it made me feel a lot better. I had a few people today who came over to see these paintings and put them for sale in their gallery. It was kind of a big day for me which was making me nervous, but painting him was calming me down. Ross, they're here, my dad said. Coming, dad, I replied and cleaned my hands to greet them. Hello, Ross. We are excited to see what you have for us, one of the artists said. Sure, I'm excited to show you some as well, I replied back and walked them towards my garage, which is also my tiny studio. Here they are, all ten of them. I pointed out the painting series I made based on Under the Wave theme. They included ten different views of underwater, such as mountains inside the ocean, scuba divings, fishes, and even broken Titanic. These are amazing, Ross, he complimented. Thank you, sir, I said. I turned around as I saw Robert, one of the two people who came looking after some of the paintings I keep at the corner paintings of Zack. What are these, Ross? He asked. Oh, uh, nothing much. They're just there, I replied, chuckling back. Sell me those, he said with a straight face, looking and sounding serious. They're not for sale, I replied. I will pay you double. They're amazing. Sell me those, Ross, he said again. I was intimidated by a straight request that almost sounded like an order to me so I couldn't say no, as I was still new in the market, and I didn't want to lose out on such a good and big deal. He said he would pay double. That would easily cover the cost of my next project, and I would make out good money as well. Okay, let's do this, I said with a slight excitement and nervousness. Oh great, you will not regret this, he replied, and I started picking those for him. If these sell well, we will surely call you for more projects with us, he replied and left. I'm so proud of you, son, my dad said as he walked towards me. However, he thought I sold the underwater painting because he's unaware of the fact that I drew Zack and also that I'm in love with him. It was a big day which came to an end. I popped back to my bed and took my phone out. I started scrolling through Instagram when I saw Zack posted a story. I immediately opened it, but it sat in my mood. It was a picture of him with the trophy he won and his girlfriend Emma on the side. Yeah, he was dating that too. A girl. Yet I fell in love with him. Not like I have any chance with him or I ever will have. Still, I'm not really a supporter of their relationship. It's simply because I don't feel like the relationship is very aw. It seems like all the cameras to me, but again, it doesn't matter how I feel because I'm never going to be with him. With that thought, I dozed off to sleep. A week later, I got a call from the gallery and they told me that it's all sold out. They were out of my many paintings in just three days and someone placed a very big order for four paintings. He told me that. That someone who ordered four paintings is none other than Zack himself. What? Are you serious? I screamed as I was not able to believe what had just happened. Yes, and we called you to inform you that he wants to meet you in person, he said, and cut the call. I couldn't digest the fact that it had happened. Literally, last week I was thinking that painting him is my secret passion and no one will ever know about it. But now many do, including him. I went down to give my dad the news, except the details where I'm in love with him and my dream is coming true. I decided to go out to celebrate the victory all by myself. I do this a lot, going out in parks or cafes to celebrate myself sometimes. It makes me feel happy about myself. While I was on the way, my phone pinned a notification. On opening it, I noticed a familiar account with a blue tick. It's the first time that someone has texted me, but I do not have the guts to open it, as it was Zack. The username Zamiki shined brighter than ever. I took a moment to let it sink before I could see what the message was, since I paint to sell. I have a public account, so I'm sure finding me wouldn't be that hard. I took a seat by the cafe and ordered its iced tea. I was procrastinating with excitement and wanted to settle before I saw what was behind the notification. Finally, I pressed open and it said, This is the most beautiful I've ever seen, and that is in your paintings. I couldn't help myself but buy a few. People might think I'm a narcissist after this, but I couldn't care less. You have so much talent, and thank you for painting me. I smiled at the text and at his honesty. I thought for a while and replied back, It was a pleasure painting you. I enjoy your game a lot and it makes me feel like I'm the only one playing it.
so painting you is the least I can do to thank you. I pressed sent, and to my surprise, I immediately got a reply. That's great to hear. Do you want to meet? If it's possible, I would love to see more of your work. That was the moment I realized my world changed in a week, and Robert said the right thing that I will not regret selling those paintings to him, and at that moment, I am the most thankful to Robert. Yes, absolutely. Where do you want to meet? I asked him to text back. I have a game tomorrow night. I will inform security about you, and you can come watch me play. I will see you after the game, then. Sounds good? Yeah, I would love that. Thank you, I texted back and started sipping my coffee, in a hurry. I could feel my stomach sinking after all that excitement. I went home and opened my wardrobe to find the best outfit I could. After an hour, I came up with a plain shirt, jeans, and a denim jacket. I'm so basic, but this feels good enough to me. I placed my phone on the table and dozed off to sleep, excited to see him tomorrow. Next morning, I woke up from a bad dream. I usually get someone's in a while and spend my whole day figuring out about them, but not today. I put the thoughts aside and started my day. I thought of giving him a gift since it's my first time meeting him. I started searching for things to give a boy, then to a footballer. Then I searched very specifically what Zach likes, but nothing good came up. So after a lot of thought, I found out what I wanted to give him. It was almost time for the match, so I got dressed and went there. The field was quite far for me, so it took an hour to reach there. He lives in the same city as I do, which made me relate to his accent and culture, even making me more attracted towards him. Once I reached, I walked towards the security to ask if Zach had left any message for me, and I was impressed to know that he is a responsible person and has ordered his security to leave me in one of the good seats. The security asked for my ID and some other documents, then made me sign a few entries for safety purposes. After all the process, I walked in. It was after a very long time that I was walking into the stadium. My dad used to take me to the games when I was young, but after my mom passed away ten years back, things changed for both of us, but we both accepted it in our own ways. I saw hundreds of people already sitting there, half an hour before the match. I went to the assigned seat. Slowly it got more crowded. The teams entered and I saw Zach. I'm sure he wouldn't know what I looked like, but I'm happy seeing him up this close. The match started, so it was going against our team, but I have faith in the team, and they proved it right. Zach scored one goal today, and gained cheers from the entire stadium. I could hear everyone shout his name. That is popularity, and that's how good he is. I also noted Tom Mackey who is a great player of his time, standing near the field. He is the owner of this tournament, and even though he is Zach's dad, no one ever suspected him for any sort of favoritism, because that is how honest and strict he seems. But I would just say he's a professional. The game ended and we won by one goal. All the boys in the field celebrated the win. Some took their shirts off and the crowd went even crazy. I moved to the small room nearby after a while and waited for Zach to come. Fifteen minutes went by and there was no one around. I waited for 10 more minutes before I decided to go out and look for him, but as I opened the door, I saw Zach about to knock on the door. Hey, Ross, right? He said. Yes, hi, Zach. Great match, I replied. I could already feel the blood rushing. Thanks, man. Who do you support? He asked jokingly. Hell United's, of course, I replied chuckling. He came inside and we sat. Not many people know about this about me, but I love collecting paintings, and honestly, you're the first person who drew me in this pretty. That made me buy my own painting. Thank you, Zach. You are actually the first portrait I ever made. In fact, the only one, I replied back, holding away my shyness. Really? You're a great artist. I'm sure you'll get more people asking you to draw them. Hoping for the best, I replied. We are having a small party after this. You want to join? He asked. Yeah, sure. I would love to, I said, and he escorted me towards the car. We sat in different cars. He was with his friends, and I got an empty car taking me to God knows where, but I was happy it was where Zach will be. The car stopped in front of a luxurious villa sort of house that was lit up with dim lights and was already full of people. I walked into the house and it was a whole new world. There was a bunch of drinks in the corner, ping pong table, cards, and many more games which kept people engaged. I walked past everyone and reached the other end of the house which had a very big swimming pool and surprisingly it was empty at that time. I felt out of place as I don't really party much so I decided to sit out for a while and enjoy my own company. But not too late enough I had company. A girl came and sat next to me, and I realized who she was, yet she introduced herself. Hi, I'm Emma, she said. Hi, I know who you are, I said politely. Oh, well, I didn't identify you, she said. Oh, I'm Ross, uh, Zach's friend. I thought of what to say because I know it's too soon to say I'm Zach's friend, but I didn't know what else to say either. Oh, I have never met you before. I usually know most of his friends. Yeah, well, we met. Hi, Ross. What are you doing here? Before I could finish my sentence, Zach came, and kind of saved me from embarrassment. Hi, just sitting. Oh, looks like you guys already met each other, Zach said, looking at Emma and me. 
Emma met Ross. He is one of the best painters I have ever known, and his best paintings are of me, he said, laughing. Oh, so you're the one who painted him. I must say it indeed is the most beautiful painting I have seen, Emma complimented. Let's go in and get you some drinks, young boy, Zack said, pulling me inside. I walked inside and he handed me a drink. I asked him to give me something soft, as I have to go back home as well, and he respected that. We drank and spoke for a while. I was loving every second of it, and every second of being with him. Not just that, but we also danced, and he asked me about my painting career. He was impressed to know that I got his photo out of the collection. Everyone was pretty much drunk, but Zack still looked a bit sober. I should get going, I told him. Say what? He asked me to bring his face close to me because of the loud noise, which made my heart skip a beat. I have to leave. It's getting late. Oh, okay. Wish you could stay longer. Do you need a driver? He asked, offering me help. No, I'll manage, I told him. Hey, I have to give you something. Can we go somewhere quiet? I asked him as I got him a gift. Yeah, sure, he said loudly, and we walked back near the swimming pool. What do you have for me? He asked. Something that you will love, I told him, taking out a tiny canvas of Van Gogh painting, which happens to be the both of our favorite artists. I got it when I was very young, from a Van Gogh museum, and always kept it with me. Oh my god, are you for real, Ross? He said, and he hugged me. My heart felt like it would explode at any minute. He stayed there for a while. I started feeling his heavy weight on my body until I realized he had fallen asleep while hugging me. I laughed and held him tight. I walked him toward the chair, which we kept at the side, and laid him down there. I kept the painting near him and went back home. I woke up with my phone buzzing, and as I opened up the phone, a smile framed on my face. It was Zack who posted the story with the canvas I gave him, saying, Got the best gift in years. Thank you, R. I smiled looking at it. I replied to his story with a, You're welcome, Z, and got back to my work. I got more orders from the gallery after a successful launch. They had given me a bunch of themes to finish in a month. I started today before I got late. In a few hours, I checked my phone and there was a notification saying, let's meet. Again, my heart thumped a beat as it was Zack. Even though we met yesterday, I was still equally shocked and surprised to meet him. I replied to his text and got ready and left for the decided place. Hey, I said as I saw him waiting at the cafe for me. Hey, Ross, he said, standing up. I didn't know what happened in the first meeting, but I really liked seeing you and talking to you yesterday, so I thought maybe I could initiate friendship with you if you are not too busy to have a friend, he said, making me laugh. Absolutely no. I would love to have a professional footballer as my friend as well, I said. We started talking more. He told me how happy he had been since yesterday after winning the match and getting the gift. We also spoke about how he got into football, and he told me it was in his genes, and he just loves it. But soon the conversation shifted to our dating lives. So are you seeing anyone? He asked. Oh, none at the moment, I replied. Oh, is it? How come you're so talented? I bet any girl would want to date you, he said. Yeah, except I'm not into girls, I'm gay, I said without thinking much, and noticed a change of expression on his face. What's wrong, I asked. Oh, nothing. That's great, dude, he said. So what about you? How did you and Emma meet? Oh, so Emma's my dad's friend's daughter. Honestly, telling you she's more like a best friend to me than a girlfriend, because I don't have such feelings for her. It's just that our parents came together to invest in the club, and thought it would be nice for us to get close, so they made us each other's girlfriend and boyfriend. Oh, that is sad, isn't it? I mean, why are you guys still dating then? I asked back. That is because her dad's reputation is still connected, and we're good friends, so we can manage. However, I know she feels more for me, and I don't. I can't, he said, sitting comfortably on the chair. Because I am gay too, he said, making me stop my movements. What? I asked loudly. Shh, no one knows about it, so please keep it low-key. You're the first one to know. I didn't know how to feel about this. I felt a gap. I had one truth about two people. One who is my crush and one who is also a celebrity. It was such a big news to me, yet I keep it all to myself. Just how he asked me to. Alright, I have to go now. But I hope next time when we meet, we can either go see a game together or some paintings, he said. And I nodded. We bid our goodbyes and I left home with a heavy secret and feeling hidden in my heart. This continued for more than a month. By now I have met him around five times and I always see us getting closer than before. And also, to my notice, Zack hasn't posted Emma on his story even once, which is a new thing, as he would post her once or twice a week before. This time, for the first time, we decided to meet at my place. So I had all the preparations done. I had all the paintings I made of him, behind the big canvas curtains that I got. I prepared some empty canvas for him, along with some paint, because we decided to do something fun. He promised to take me to one of his football games next time he goes out to see any. I received a text from him asking for my location, and I forwarded it to him. It took him approximately 45 minutes to reach my house. Hey, Zach. Hey, R. I like how he calls me R. 
It's actually my initials that I paint behind all my paintings. Is this sign or mark? Excited to show me your artistic side? I asked him jokingly. Hell yeah, he said. We walked towards the garage, and as he entered, his jaw fell open. He was amazed by the setting, the lights, and the art supplies I bought myself after getting paid recently. I gave my studio a bit of a makeover, so now it looks nothing like a garage from the inside, but a proper studio with a lot of paints and plants. He sat in front of the canvas, and I sat in front of another. We decided to paint each other, but how we want to see each other. I locked the door for more privacy and seriousness. As fast as my heart beating for having the man I love sitting in front of me. I'm also a competitive person and wanted to win this. We started our painting, and after two hours, we both were done. We didn't realize how time passed away. We exchanged our places and I was shocked to see his drawing, whereas the look on his face was of pure surprise as well. It was a picture of me holding a hand, but the person was missing, or rather incomplete. It looked a lot like me and I was shocked to know how well he could paint. Whereas I drew a picture of us sitting together with our foreheads connected. I drew what my heart said without fearing any judgment, because painting is the only way I can express how I feel. After seeing each other's painting, we realized what was on our mind, and without wasting another second, we recreated our paintings by holding each other close and pulling in a kiss. This is the best I have felt in a while, he said. Me too, I replied. You won't believe that I started liking you from the day I saw you, he said, making me laugh. What? Why are you laughing? he asked. Well, you won't believe that I have liked you for years now, and I did before I met you. And I do right now as well, I confessed. Our casual day turned into a sweet date. It was time for him to go back, so this time I kissed him goodbye. I packed our paintings together to keep them safe before it was ready for me to give him one. After that, I went to sleep. I woke up with my phone constantly ringing with a bunch of messages and whatnot. I opened my phone and it was a state of pure shock. I had ten missed calls from Zach and a few from the gallery. Multiple messages from random numbers and insta DMs with a bunch of curse words. My head started to blur, so I took a deep breath before opening the Insta, and I almost dropped my phone after seeing what was there all over the internet. It was a news article of Zach and I going inside my garage, and the doors closed, followed by a picture of us kissing near his car, before we went back home. I knew we messed up big time, too soon. I immediately called Zach, but Emma picked it up. Oh, look who it is, she said, in a taunting voice. Emma, where is Zach? I asked. He's just ruining his career because of you, and not just our relationship as well. Thank you, Ross, she said in pure sarcasm, but I was worried about him, so I took my car keys and went straight to see him. As I reached there, LA got the news that his father saw what happened, and now they're talking separately. I decided to wait in my car. I noticed there were a few paparazzi hiding behind bushes. Probably that's how they got a hold of us. After waiting for three hours, I noticed Zach coming out, but this time not alone. He had his suitcase in his hands with a bunch of other stuff. I opened the door to see what was wrong, but he didn't say a word and sat in my car. Drive, he said. But what happened? Why do you have your suitcase with you? He asked. Just drive, he said, and I did what he said. On my way, I got a bunch of calls from the gallery, which I picked, and they told me that they were putting a ban on me because of something that just happened, and that all Zach's fans hate me, so they can't risk the gallery. I had no option but to agree with him. As I was driving, Zach told me what happened. My dad called me after he saw the news. I had no idea what happened, but then I got out, and I didn't want to lie, so I told the truth, and that I am dating you. A boy, which angered my dad, and he told me to either choose you or him. But the worst part is, he said I have no career, and no talent, and all I am today is because of him. So I decided to leave him, and his support for good. I have decided to do something on my own now, with you on my side. So will you support me, Ross? He told me all of that, and I started sobbing. Seeing him like this made me forget about my own problems. I just wanted to console him. I pulled the car on the side and hugged him. What you did is really brave, and I'm with you. Always, Zach. Zach was past what happened, and I was also done with struggling to get people to like my art and see me as who I am and not hate me for loving someone. We took a lot of time off to know what we wanted, and know what we figured it out, together. Zach decided to open his own football club, but this time with people who are not that famous, but have real talent. He decided to challenge his own father on this knowing that it can finish his career in a snap, but I love his courage so much that I couldn't help but support him knowing this consequences damn well. Zach posted an open challenge in the public which his dad accepted because of their clashing ego. We only got two weeks to prepare for it. Zach invested everything we had on his team, his money, time, and talent, and he prepared for the best. This gave me the chance and power to come up with my own collection, so I decided to paint our journey so people can accept us better and understand the love we have for each other. The day came when Boston was about to witness the biggest match in history, father versus son, but moreover, love versus hate. 
The match began and we started losing. His father came to us and told us to give up because apparently I have ruined the mind of Zack and he is just delusional about being gay. What he said made me so angry, but I tried to keep calm considering the pressure Zack must put me in right now. I have already made a deal with the tiny growing gallery who, with a lot of convincing, agreed to take my paintings and even put them for sale. I was also waiting for them to call and give me some news. Even selling one painting would mean a lot to me as it would put our story in the world and change it for the better. The match was getting nerve-wracking and nail-biting. It was the last five minutes left when Zack shouted, Go for it, boys. Don't let anyone take this from you. This was the boost they needed, and they did it. We couldn't believe it, but Zack and his team did it. They were able to beat his father, who was Zack's coach and one of the biggest players of his time. But we did it. Zack pulled my hand, and we ran to the field. Every young boy hugged Zack and pulled him on his shoulders. After a while, Zack looked at me and came towards me. Thank you for believing in me. I lost myself that day, but you helped me find myself via your brilliant mind in paintings. You showed me who I really am. This is all because of you, Ross, he said, which made me emotional, remembering the struggle we went through, all those months. My phone rang and I saw it was from the new gallery. Congratulations, Ross, we sold 10 pieces. And I would like to talk about ordering more over a cup of tea, they said, and I cried. I couldn't hold back anymore. I told Zach the news. He came closer and kissed me in the middle of the football field. That's the most romantic thing I have ever felt. I held him closer and kissed him even more passionately. The crowd cheered for us and I saw his dad looking from the corner, but it seemed like we succeeded in breaking his ego. We did it, we both said, looking at each other and connected our foreheads together to recreate the moment from a painting that I drew. Conclusion Zach and Ross both shifted out of Boston. Zach decided to leave football as a player, but continue being a coach to those who really needed him and is talented to play in his team. He and many bribe him to take some offers or admit their kids, but he refused, saying that this place only accepts real talent. Whereas Ross was now one of the investors of the gallery he sold his paintings at. He was a partial owner of it and focused on building it. People have accepted both of them in the way they are and supported each other. After one of the matches, Zack decided to give this journey a new path and proposed to Ross after they won the match. Ross, without any waste of time, accepted it. The couple kissed to celebrate their love and had their true supporters and their real fans to witness the moment that created the history of one of their best proposals. The end. What do you think would happen if Zach didn't leave his dad? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.